All right, Eric. Well, you know, you have such deep expertise here on on product lifestyles and strategic decisions and concepts and developments and marketing and your you know your intro is mind-blowing so I just let's just get to it like tell everybody what you're working on now it sounds pretty cool sure sure well thank you for having me today I appreciate getting a chance to visit with you and with your audience um, I'm I'm working on building a company called on ramp funds we provide uh, short-term working capital financing to e-commerce SMBs, really helping to provide fuel to help drive a business grow faster uh, and, and also allow the merchant uh, and the, the SMB business owner to extract their personal capital from what is kind of a low-value set of activities um, in terms of just sales turnover and redeploy it into, into more growth-oriented activities for the business that require more investment capital versus turnover capital. Okay, so you're you're, I am like a novice here. I'm on I'm on the other end when the people make the money and they want to make sure that it's safe and they don't lose it, right? Right. That's what that's what I do. Safe money, and and I've never lost a dime in thirty years. So it's right. it's different. So now when you're talking about SMB lending and shipping and all of that, maybe you could break that down for everybody. Sure. That don't know. Sure. So a small and medium business owners right are the lifeblood of the United States. And, and really, um, the more small and medium business owners we have, the, the healthier, safer and freer the world is. So um, when you're running a small business, especially when you're in your early stages, a lot of your profit dollars are captured in the inventory assets that you are selling. So for instance, this pair of eyeglasses, you have to buy a thousand of them to sell them over 90 days. Well, you buy the thousand up front and then you sell one at a time, right? And so maybe you're selling 10 a day. It's going to take you to about day 65, 75 to actually get to the point where you've been paid back all of the inventory cost, all the advertising cost, all the shipping and fulfillment costs, and you're finally getting profit dollars out. The challenge becomes, if you're that small business owner, that at day 60, you're buying next quarter's inventory. And so now all that profit you are kind of depending on, you've actually had to go find money to go buy next quarter's inventory before the profit dollars have come out, which means you've tied up that profit. And what happens then from a small business owner perspective is your capital and the profit you think you're generating is actually captured in a very slow cash conversion cycle, um, which means even though from an accounting statement perspective, your accountant tells you the year, hey, you've got a 15% profit margin, if that's a million dollar revenue business, that 150,000 in profit is actually stuck in inventory. It's stuck in other expenses that you actually aren't paying yourself with that. Um, and so what happens then is business owners get frustrated with this cycle. What we are then is a very short term kind of line of credit, if you will, that is far more optimized than the business owner's credit card. We're dialed in to the actual sales performance of the business. Um, and then what we allow you to do is use our capital for that inventory, for the advertising and for shipping and fulfillment, basically kind of the big three cost drivers into sales turnover. So we, we try to offload that burden from the, the, the business owner's personal finances that you can use ours. And then their personal finances have been freed up to go do more value added activities for the business, find new products, find new places to sell, maybe hire employees so you can go keep up with demand, um, you know, things like that. That's awesome. So, right, coming out of the pandemic, I bet you you got a lot of people going virtual and trying to create businesses. Did, did that really blow up for, your, for we, you guys? We, we started in um, really kind of July 2021. Okay. And so we were kind of, you know, midway through the pandemic cycle, right? Really the year before is where you really saw tons of emergent growth coming out of there. But right. at, by the point we got on, on, we were really up and running, um, customers were coming to us. So um, it was nice, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of growth. And now we're on the backside of that, right, with inflation, with some supply chain constraints that are, you know, putting a hurt on a lot of businesses. And yeah. now we're able to help them during that period of time because of the way that we're structured, um, that, you know, we're, we're an alternative source of capital to help them continue to grow their business uh, while they're working through the ebbs and flows of, you know, in the inflation cycle that we're through right now and, and some of the supply chain lengthening of, of timelines and whatnot, we're very well disposed to work within those parameters. 
That's cool. So can you break down more like say, uh, say I want to, you know, I need some help. So, or anybody, right? Do they, is it like you go to the bank and you get a loan? You know, uh, what, what's the process in this? Far, far, far easier. So um, if you think about going to a bank, right, the very first thing you have to do is show them your ID, prove who you are. Um, mm -hmm. And then the bank typically to do a business line of credit for a small business owner it takes a lot of time. I, I think a, a bank loan is like 400 pieces of paper touches 25 different people. Right. And right. on average is somewhere between 60 and 90 days before you're told no or yes, but more often no. Um, yeah. Our process is very simple. You actually go to onrampfunds.com. You create, you click the sign up link, create your username and password. And then you'll connect your Amazon store or your Shopify store or eBay or Walmart or big commerce, Squarespace, what have you. And when you connect that store, we're then ingesting all your order and sales data to use to then make an underwriting offer. And we will pre-qualify you with that offer before you've proven who you are, before we've asked for any documentation about your identity. We're just telling you, hey, does your store meet the minimum requirements necessary to be able to work with OnRamp? Um, if that happens and you're interested in proceeding forward, then you can connect your bank account. We use some real simple technology to do that. That allows us to do a quick cash flow analysis on the business to then further refine what that offer would be. And then if you want to accept the offer, that's where you'll actually do all that identity documentation and, and you know digitally prove who you are, that you're the owner of the business um, and that sort of thing, where then at that point, right, the, those, those are the hardest hoops to jump through, right? That's when we ask you to do that after you know that we can say yes. Um, so that way we're not asking you to waste a lot of time on um, identity documentation or pulling together tax returns, but which we don't even ask for. Um, we're just asking you to do the easy things, right? Connect your Amazon account. It's a simple username and password. Same thing with your bank account. We then pull out the data and we do all the work for you and then tell you if we can help you or not. And if we can, uh, we'll ask you for a couple of proof points that you are who you say you are, and then we can fund. Um, are the fastest we funded somebody right now is about two hours from when they signed up to actually getting money from us. Uh, on average, it takes basically overnight to get approved and get your loan. Um, so it's it's unlike a bank, right? Super fast, super easy, um, fully optimized, fully automated. So what is the threshold? I mean, do you have to be at a certain level to access these funds or what? how does that work? You have so, to be, you know, in business so long. You know, it helps that, you know, the longer you've been in business, the, the more we can do to help you. Um, the more revenue you have, the more money we can loan you. Um, on average, our customers have between half a million and five million in sales uh, per year. Uh, our biggest customers are north of 20 million, but we actually work with businesses that are really in their first $5,000 to $7,500 in 30-day sales. So we do have programs for essentially brand new sellers. Um, and then we have programs that work with much larger sellers. Okay. So what kind of, how's the payback? Is it, you know, over a certain time and interest and how's that break all down? So it typically is um, between a 30 and 120 day term where, okay. um, depending on what you need the funds for, right? So inventory might be longer. Um, advertising might be shorter, right? Because advertising, it's going to be pay-per-click advertising. It's driving the next sale. And so then that might be on a 30-day term. Um, but really, we work with, uh, with the business owner to understand what their exact needs are, what their um, inventory assets available are that they can then use to collateralize the, the advance. Um, and then we deploy the funds. Um, so on a 90-day cycle, we would look at the 90-day revenue stream. We typically like to loan um, up to about 35% of that expected 90-day revenue. Anything more than that, we actually are concerned that we become uh, uh, overloading the, the business with debt that can't be paid back in that 90-day cycle. Um, the other reason that's so important, right, is the cash conversion cycle for most e-commerce businesses ranges from 60 to 120 days. And what we know is when that cycle starts back over, you need more capital. And so what we don't want to do is offer somebody a 12-month term 90 days later, they need more, but they haven't finished paying it back because guess what? They can't get more. And now they don't have sales to actually generate the revenue necessary to pay it back any longer. So what we are is that fuel in the tank 
that is just keeping the business turning over. Um, and then what that allows the business owner to do is the money that they had personally put into that is now been has been freed up so they can either pay themselves a salary or go invest in new channels, new product development. Um, maybe they want to, maybe their warehouse is too small. They need to get more space so they can carry more inventories. And then they need some employees to move the products faster when they sell. So, you know, what happens then is that, that business owner's capital, that is very, very valuable, um, and should be put into higher risk and higher reward activities has been freed up to do that because that low risk turnover portion of the business that, that cash is still necessary for we've come and filled that gap for them, freeing their capital for more important and more valuable uses. So you're just looking over the whole thing like a like a big safety net in a way, right? I like to think of it as a safety net. Yeah, that's why we, we're careful about not loaning too much because right. we don't wanna we don't wanna be the the business or the lender that accidentally puts that business owner into some sort of pinch. And so because of because we're very specific around what we do, right? We're not we're not equipment financing. I'm not financing to help you buy a forklift for your warehouse, right? That, you know, that forklift guy, or if you need a truck for your business, right? Toyota, they have financing for those things that are specific to those assets. What we are is that short-term turnover asset capital. Um, and then we work alongside, you know, like an SBA loan. Um, so a lot of our merchant, a lot of our business owner clients will have financing from the Small Business Administration, or they might have, you know, kind of a line of credit with longer payment terms from a bank, where we very naturally fit next to that because those are things that are designed for different use cases within your business. Um, and so we we we've, we've carved out a really specific niche that we just really anchor to. Um, so that you can use other sources of capital for other parts of your business and put together a bigger a portfolio of providers that really meet all of your needs. That's great. What do you, you know, what do you think, especially now, I mean, with inflation and everything that's happening in the money world, what do you think the biggest financial challenges that small businesses are facing at this point? I mean, I think there there is a credit there's a credit crunch going on right now, right? Availability of capital for small business owners is is more difficult to come by, right? Um, right, like your existing credit cards, right? They, you know, Amex is reducing credit lines and things like that, tightening up their credit standards. Um, so the capital that a lot of small business owners have, have pri previously used, right, is harder to come by if you were. If you're going to use a, a home equity line of credit to get some cash for your business, that's now far more expensive, right? With with what happens at the Fed fund rate and interest rates going up so much, um, so you know I, I do think those things put a big damper on economic growth, right? Which means that small business owners are going to see reduced sales. The nice thing for the small business owner, though, is while they respond to the broader macroeconomic conditions because you're small, you still have the ability to muscle through in a way that Amazon can't, right? Because for Amazon to grow, the entire US economy has to grow. For a small business owner that has 5,000 unit sales and maybe at 100 bucks a month, you know, what is that 500,000 in sales a month, to get another 500 in sales, 500 units sold in a month, is a, it's an easier challenge. It's not easy, I'm not trying to say that it is, but you're not dependent upon the economy growing. You're dependent upon finding the next 500 customers to grow your business by 10%. And that's a far less daunting challenge. Um, and so I do think, you know, the small business owner has some advantages that they get to work with when thinking about their business that way. That's really a good, that's a great point of view there. I mean, I never even thought of it like that, but that makes sense. So that, you know, besides, you know, the funding and when you look at everything, what do you think the future is of e-commerce? Do you think that there's going to be too many regulations or the interest rates are going to be too much or what do you think? Um, you know, interest rates go up and down and they'll come back down again. So I think that's a that's a, a phenomenon that's going to exist for probably the next 12 to 18 months. Um, you know, I do think as we we see more of our manufacturing base move back to the United States and diversify out of China, you will see some some higher costs for a little while, but those <laughs> things become deflationary once that industrial base has been rebuilt elsewhere. 
Um, and so that will longer term bring prices and interest rates back under control. Um, you know, I think in the in, in the next year or two, right, people are just going to have to weather the storm, uh, you know, right. The, 95% of small business owners think there's a recession coming. Some people would say we're already in a recession. Um, I know Goldman, I think, just announced today that they've increased the odds of a recession in the next six months or nine months to like 35%. So I don't know where it ends up. I just know that, you know, America always bounces back and and you just work through the hard times and businesses that are born in hard times are typically far stronger when good times get here. And so it's just your job to to weather through and find a way. Right, exactly. I totally agree with what you're saying there. So in you you know you have you have such an expertise. It's just like another world to me in the in the product, the life, the cycle, right? And the duration of the products and the concepts and development. Do you get into that with are you just staying in in the funds or do you kind of like coach people in to what they're doing inside of their business? How does that well, work? We're we're huge proponents of helping the small business owner win, um, and what we are incredibly focused on doing what we can with our product to help them win, and do everything we can to make sure that we're putting together a great product with the discipline around our product that's necessary. We then have a broad partner network where if you need help with, you know building a supply chain or creating new products. We have partners like Gemba who will do that for you, right? And they can source supply chain in Vietnam and China and South, pardon me, South America and India all over the world um, and can help you, you know, build that prototype product all the way to getting a product ready to go um, and actually start selling it on Amazon and Shopify and wherever else. Um, and so we don't do that. But if, if, if our customer says, hey, I want to launch new products. Do you have any suggestions that I can work with? We'll put you in touch with that person. Or, hey, I'm not, you know, I've gotten as far as I can with driving and advertising, and now I need some more help with Amazon or Google AdWords, right? Well, we have a bunch of agent, advertising agency partners that, you know, specialize in supplements or athletic gear or what have you that we can then help make that connection and bring that expert in. Now, again, we're not trying to be the expert ourselves. But if we can make a connection via that partner network that we're constantly growing, then we absolutely want to do that so that the merchants got as many experts, you know, backing them as possible. That's fabulous. So you got a whole, got a team behind the team there. So That's the right. network, right? Then partners, because you can, we got to do, you know, partnering. That's how it works. Well, and they're experts, right? They bring, yeah. they bring expertise in areas that I don't, I won't pretend to be an expert in. Um, and, you know, if, if I do my job and OnRamp does our job right and brings that expertise to bear, then we're going to make sure that you have what you need from us for that short-term financing challenge. If I try to then be your agency for advertising, I'm not going to do a very good job at that. So let me go bring guys who are solely focused on that to help you. And if you need product Perfect. people or, or 3PL people, right? Like we have a network that we can help then you know, support those challenge and answer those questions and solve those challenges for you without us trying to be the be all and end all. That's a, that's that's the way to do it. So, so you have all levels. So, someone that's just starting with maybe five seven thousand a month, all the way up, right? You can you can catch them all. Correct. Well, we we think that you'll stop needing on ramp when you're big enough to have your own chief financial officer, right? <laughs> and so. Right. When that happens, right, that person or maybe your VP of finance writer or what have you, they're going to start getting the books together. They're going to start looking at things differently. They're going to bring relationships with banks and they're going to actually have the time to go spend that two or three months with a couple of different banks to find the one that's right for your business. Mm -hmm. That when you are the CFO and the CEO and the chief marketing officer and the head of packaging and you're the warehouse manager and you're the janitor, you don't have that time, right? And so the way we structure our product is we're trying to bring that part of what a CFO would do for you. But when that CFO gets there, somewhere between five and 20 million in revenue, usually that person's going to graduate you from on ramp. And our mission is to help as many merchants and small business owners as we can become sustainable. And some of them are going to reach sustainability at 2 million a year in revenue and never want to get bigger. And it's not my job to tell them to. It's my job to help them with the business they want to run. Others are going to outgrow that and get to a point where they're going to have a CFO and, and we're going to 
we're going to cheer them on. We're like, great. You've, you've reached the next evolution of your business and we're not the right fit for you anymore, but it doesn't mean we weren't a big, huge part of your getting to that level of success. And we're going to cheer you on from, you know, from the sidelines as you move on with, with other solutions. This is really a fabulous setup and, and I'm excited to share it to all my audience and everything. Do you have any final notes or anything that I might have missed asking you? Because you you're just, you know, there's so much information here. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many places to go. Really, if if you have questions, you know, please come to onrentfunds.com. You can learn more at our site. We have a team here that's happy to answer questions. Um, most of us have been in the e-commerce industry now for over a decade, you know, in in shipping and fulfillment in finance in merchandising in advertising so we bring a lot of back office experience to bear and we just love to be able to help as, as many people as we can you got it so we're gonna we're gonna post on ramp funds and all the information inside of the show and we'll be blasting this all over for lots of people to get inspired to do their business and go to the next level Eric, it's been a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode which includes health, wealth and peace of mind.